This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. Before we get started, you know i got to do the numbers. And by the way, they're pretty ugly. We're going to get into this and this comment from Cryptopolis, which was a topic on the show, the co-host on Friday's show. I tell you, this guy is so smart, such a wealth of knowledge, and you're going to find out one of the reasons why here in just a second. We're also going to talk about, and believe it, I'm not stuttering, $35,000 an ounce gold and the gentleman who said it. We're going to talk about that as well and a new monetary system approaching let's do the numbers which are brought to you by ladies and gentlemen clinton donnelly the crypto tax fixer guys if you haven't done your taxes or claimed your crypto you better know you got trouble in front of you you got the trials of job ahead of you make sure you reach out to clinton donnelly he is the crypto tax fixer and he has helped so many people on this channel and in this audience do not be afraid to reach out to him or to click the link below and check out the audit protection or just contact him directly for a consultation so all right let's do the numbers bitcoin is ten thousand five hundred seventy dollars and sixty four cents ethereum is three hundred forty five dollars thirty six cents and xrp is twenty three cents yes that's right twenty three cents blue light special on aisle nine <laughs> And that is not financial advice, but nevertheless, 0 0.2363 market cap is 10.6 billion. 24 hour volume is down approximately almost 4%, 3.8. And the 24 hour volume is at 1.9 billion right now. The total circulating supply remains at 45 billion, 42 million plus. Those are your numbers. All right. Let's go ahead and get into this today because there's a there's a really great little piece that was done on this um, Unstoppable Domains, and it has a comment here from Tim Draper. Let's just quickly look at this because I know a lot of people understand Unstoppable Domains, like you can buy a dot .crypto, as was very similar to the uh, .com era, and buy that name. And it's a little different, you know, what you can do now with the dot .crypto. So just really quickly look at this. So uh, Unstoppable Domains, how blockchain can be used to create removable, unremovable, excuse me, unremovable websites. Now, this is an important thing because this really comes down to what Tim Draper had said. And that's what I want to highlight. This really is like freedom of speech 2.0. It is freedom of speech for the digital world. The primary purpose of the system is to simplify cryptocurrency payments by allowing users to create a single website which acts as their crypto wallet. Now, that is mainly what we've been talking about here, the ability to send payments back and forth to somebody through their dot .crypto address. And like I said, I own drumsonline.com, guitaronline.com, and I feel like, you know, the largest guitar drum seller, you know, online may want this name and this website in the future so they can accept payments directly to that website. No intermediary, right? You know the drill. And you have the ability because uh, more recently, Draper Associated to, uh, Associates and Tim Draper himself, um, they had launched Unstoppable Domains, which makes bolder claims about the capabilities of blockchain domains. While the main focus of Unstoppable Domains is also on cryptocurrency payments, it promises another feature, the ability to build unregulated, uncensorable, and unremovable websites. I'm sure regulators may have something to say about that. But again, this just shows you the power of the tech, the power of the technology that's out here that regulators, you know, however they come at it. I'm always coming back to Jay Clayton's point that we can't fight it because it will innovate around us. We have to embrace it so they can regulate it. And that's where we are today. So make sure you check out Unstoppable Domains, guys. I got a link in the description for that. Now, let's get on to regulators because that's where we just jumped from. So we're well equipped to regulate crypto assets, says the SEC, this day live. Now, look, this is exciting to me because I know that in order for the space to truly take off, 
It's one of the reasons I'm invested in XRP heavier than any other investment that I have in the portfolio is because of the fact that I believe working with the regulators, working within the system is the best way to create a revolution. Just like Thomas Jefferson said, a revolution comes from within. And I really do believe that. So seeing here that regulators are saying that they're well equipped to regulate crypto assets means that we're no longer trying to understand them. We are ready to regulate them. And that's pretty exciting to me. Now, let's keep moving because on that front, FinCEN files a BNY Mellon process $137 million for entities linked to one coin. Now, this is interesting because I did read this article, and believe me, I'm going to spare you. I won't read it, but it is a good article. But the reality is, is they tracked all of these transactions here linked to one coin. The crypto scheme, the U.S. government accused of being a Ponzi, is estimated one coin raised over $4 billion from investors, making it one of the most successful schemes of its kind ever. Head on a swivel out here, guys and girls. I mean, this is really, it goes down through this and it talks about all of this money that's being shown here and how the banks and FinCEN, and you know, FinCEN obviously has, you know, been a regulator in the banking industry forever. But the truth is, is that they're watching all of this. If you think people aren't watching what's happening, if you think regulators are not paying attention to this market and what's happening, whether it's one coin or whether it's, you know, just you and I not paying or, or not declaring our crypto, you know, on uh, tax forms. Uh, I would seriously think again about all of that. Just be careful out here. Not banks. This can't be from Michael Val Five Links in the most sarcastic voice. The FinCEN files investigate reveal, investigation reveals that Deutsche managers, including top executives, had direct knowledge for years of serious failings that left the bank vulnerable to money launderers. You don't say. In my own sarcastic voice. Well, let me tell you, I said this last week, and it was a comment that I had during a conversation with Big Skinny. And a lot of what we're dealing with here is exactly the way he said it. You can't bring the old corrupt system into the new one because it's going to flush everybody out. Because we're talking about, just like Unstoppable Domains, we're talking about unremovable, uh, uh, immutable transactions on a blockchain that are there. And once you do something illicit and try to pass it through this new system that is an immutable record of what is going on, oh, it's just a matter of somebody getting over there to look at what you've done now, isn't it? Because you really can't hide it. So when I think of this, I really, I really, again, I think of the XRP ledger. I think of the nodes that the SEC has on the ledger. You know, I think, you know, when you look at all of this, I also think about Marcus Treacher, who said from Ripple, you know, about RippleNet and just the new space and what they were doing at that fireside chat a couple months ago. And he said, you know, they're not trying to rebuild you know, the old system, they're building something brand new. And that's where the long game comes in for Ripple as a blockchain infrastructure company. That's why they developed RippleNet. So it could be a new digital settlement version and cloud-based ser service platform with governance and compliance already inside of it, able to handle settlement for something like Swift and become the new digital settlement side for Swift. So the, this, in my mind, is where I see this. And, you know, it's interesting to me because when you think about a new system, you know, we have to think about the trouble that we're currently in. Bank of International Settlements, shout out to Savvy XRP and XRP Crypto Wolf DJ Peter Vass and Bond Crypt, who have all been sending some really great stuff over. Bank of International Settlements is hiring blockchain engineer to work on digital currencies. <laughs> because they know... They have to move into a new system. You just don't 
engineer, hire an engineer to work on digital currencies because, you know, we're just going to slap this thing together. Digital currencies don't work unless it's on a new system, by the way. So it's very exciting where things are going, and especially when you understand that the Bank of International Settlements, BIS, is the central bank of central banks. Okay, so now, what about the trouble to begin with that has brought us to these conversations, the regulators being involved, saying they're well-equipped for moving into what this new space will be, right? Where is it, all of this coming from? Well, it's coming from a global problem. And that global problem is really broke down pretty well here by the horns of a trilemma. And what is what are we talking about here? Why do governments risk the bad publicity of restricting gold? This linked to cornerstone of macroeconomics known as monetary policy trilemma. This states the country, that countries must choose between two of the following and can't generally do all three at the same time. What we're talking about here is setting fixed exchange rates, allowing capital to move freely over international borders, and being able to independently set interest rates and print money. In other words, control monetary policy. You know, coming back to number one on that one, and there's a little one-minute video I'm going to play you here, and it's fantastic the way it lays it out before we go into the next set of material. So I'm going to play that, but what I want to highlight is, is when it talks about the three different things of the horns of a trilemma, the first one is setting fixed exchange rates. It was about three weeks ago that the IMF, maybe a month most, that the IMF held a webinar, a virtual webinar, where they discussed external adjustments to the exchange rate of dominant currencies like the U.S. dollar. Let me play this video so you understand what they're talking about here. Check it out. 60 Second Adventures in Economics. Number five, the impossible trinity. Most countries trade with one another, which is usually pretty good for all involved. But it does mean it's a bit harder for each to keep control of its own finances. There are three things that governments are particularly keen on. They like to keep the exchange rate stable so that import and export prices don't suddenly jump around. They also like to control interest rates so they can keep borrowers happy without upsetting savers. And they like to let money flow in and out of their country without causing too much disruption. But there's a problem when you try to do all of these at once. Say, for example, the Eurozone tries to lower its interest rate and reduce unemployment. Money flows out to earn higher interest rates elsewhere. Exchange rates drop, which causes inflation, so the Euro interest rate is forced back up again. You can either fix your exchange rate and let money flow freely across national borders, but have no control of your interest rates, or control your interest and exchange rates, but then you can't stop the capital flowing in and out. But like an overzealous triathlete, you can't do all three at once. And there you have it. That's a pretty quick breakdown of, of, a, of a macro problem right there. And again, the IMF just about a month ago had a webinar where they sat down and talked about the external adjustment to the exchange rate peg for dominant currencies like the U.S. dollar. And coming here, back to what Cryptopolis shared with us on the last Friday show, where he talked about the correlation that he has found between the strength of the U.S. dollar and the dip in cryptocurrencies. The U.S. dollar index is up 33%, and as we did the numbers this morning, crypto is down. There's a correlation here, and I tell you, he's, uh, you know, Cryptopolis is such a wealth of knowledge, guys. He is such a wealth of knowledge. If you're not checking out that Friday show with co host Cryptopolis and myself, I really encourage you to do it. And I know sometimes they're longer videos, but you can learn so much from the conversations that we're having and tapping into all the insights and many, many years of experience that he has in these markets. Okay, so going from this and understanding that there's a dollar strength when a crypto weakness is happening, and when the dollar weakness happens, there's a crypto strength taking place in the market, so generally speaking. So now let's go to this now. So we see the dollar strength. This is the U.S. debt clock. The U.S. national debt, $26 trillion and jumping. Now, here's what's interesting about this. 
if the dollar strength were to run away, which is a deflationary scenario, what we're looking at with the dollar strength rising, six, seven trillion dollars printed and put to work here, and we still see a dollar strength happening. This goes to what Cryptopolis talked about, where they're going to have to print even more money because they need inflation to happen. They have to have inflation happen because if the dollar strength gets too strong, then the U.S. debt crushes the entire nation because it's insurmountable. Here's another interesting thing. When we come over here to the right and we look at the uh, dollar to gold ratio right here. Now, this is not all the money, but it's just a evaluation here that has the dollar to gold ratio currently right now at $30,170 per ounce. Okay. It says the year over year increase in U.S. M2 money supply divided by the yearly world production of gold in ounces. So that's a variable that can change and it's not all the money. Right. So that's what you're looking at currently at that stat. All right. Now, with that being said, back in 1913, that ratio dollar to gold ratio was twenty eight dollars and ninety three cents. Well, I did a little looking back in 1913, even though that ratio was at twenty eight dollars and ninety three cents back then, the actual price per gold per ounce was at twenty dollars and sixty seven cents. So you can see the disparity in the figure and that it was not completely accurate to the dollar gold ratio. Right. But you can see it was, a, you know, a, a float of eight bucks or so in there. Right. So now currently gold is what it's I don't know what gold is right now, but, you know, it's not it's not as close of, of a span of 20 to 28 bucks in the uh, ratio year over year versus the production in the M2 money. Right. We're looking at now, you know, a twenty nine or twenty eight thousand dollar difference in the uh, ratio that they have here on the debt clock from gold. Well, let's talk about this because. Kristalina Georgieva, new managing director for the IMF, talks about a great reset, a great reset. And uh, so what it would take for historians to look back at this crisis as a moment of a great reset. If I come down here, look who fits the bill. It's XRP. Let me first talk about green growth. We know that they, I'm not going to read that to you, but the reality is reducing carbon intensity. We know that XRP uses hardly any uh, energy to, to do do what it does on the network comparatively to like Bitcoin and other cryptos. Second, they talk about smarter growth. We know the digital economy is the big winner of this crisis. Well, how about that? But we must not allow the digital divide to widen so that some countries and communities fall further behind. Well said. It bring more pain in the future. And then third, they talk about fair growth. If left to its own devices, the pandemic is going to deepen inequality. This will happen by major, uh, happen in prior pandemics, as history shows, right? We can avoid this if we concentrate on investing in people, social fabric of our societies, and access to opportunities, education for all and expansion. You get the drill. And the reality here is, is that XRP fits this bill. XRP fits this bill in so many ways of what she's talking about to solve this problem from a ground foundational level, I should say, from a foundational level, it can start to solve this problem to build and rebuild a new monetary system around it. This is Ross Norman. Ross Norman is a huge gold guy. He has been uh, in gold for quite some time. In fact, I have here, let me see. Um, it is this clip right here. I want to play for you just so you can hear a couple of the people that Ross Norman has worked with before I give you this clip that he talks about $35,000 an ounce gold. Listen to this. Listen to who he's worked with. My very earliest experience was working for Johnson Matthey, the world's largest gold refiners based in Royston. Um, I then traded gold for two banks, NM Rothschilds in the city and later Credit Suisse as a, as a physical dealer. Credit Suisse and the Rothschilds. <laughs> 
You just can't make it up, can you? You just can't make it up. Well, let's go to here and see what Ross Norman says, CEO of Sharps Pixley, which, full disclosure, is a gold and metals bullion broker. Hear what he says here. Without a readjustment in the gold price, I think someone came up with a figure of $35,000 an ounce. Um, the argument clearly for it would be that it would force upon the regulators, the official institute, the, the central bankers in particular, discipline in terms of QE. I suspect that there will be some moment in time, uh, rebalancing, I think they're using the word reset. Nice soft word, perhaps a word like reset, that will occur in the next short few years and that something new will evolve and it might involve linking gold partly to gold or something else. I think that there'll be a lot of pressure on central banks to create a new currency that is linked to something that can't be QE'd and created out of thin air. You can't print this stuff. How about that? And then that makes you really think about the whole idea of the Great Reset right here. The Great Reset from the IMF. And then we look at, like, what has happened in years past? You know, the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. Well, first of all, let's take a look at this from XRP Crypto Quebec. Shout out to you. So where does the authority to fix price gold come from? It comes from the U.S. Department of Treasury, the Exchange Stabilization Fund. Look at these three things here. The Exchange Stabilization Fund, known as the ESF, consists of three types of assets, U.S. dollars, foreign currencies, and special drawing rights, the SDR, which is an international reserve asset created by the IMF. The ESF can be used to purchase or sell foreign currencies to hold U.S. foreign exchange and special drawing right assets and to provide finance, financing for foreign governments. All operating ESF require explicit authorization in Secretary of Treasury. The Secretary is responsible for the formulation and implementation of U.S. international monetary and financial policy, including exchange market intervention policy. Exchange market intervention policy. Now, that I, I say that twice because it goes back to what I talked to you about, about the IMF having the webinar about external adjustments to the exchange rate of dominant currencies like the U.S. dollar. The legal basis of the ESF is the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. We're going to get to that. One particular hearing I attended that year produced a remarkable admission from the assistant attorney. In short, he said that while the government was not admitting that the complaint or to be that admitting to the com complaint, it nevertheless had the powers and authority to do all things the suit complained of manipulating gold prices. In other words, we're convinced that the Gold Reserve Act gives the U.S. government, particularly the Treasury Department an exchange stabilization fund the unrestricted authority to intervene and secretly rig any market in the world. Our work now is to simply expose this policy to as large an audience as possible. Where do you think gold prices would be right now if not for this manipulation? What's the true value of gold? The true value of gold is whatever our free market wants it to be. Our uh, attitude toward money is very libertarian. Now, let us go back to the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. The Gold Reserve Act of 1933 was passed under President Franklin Roosevelt at the height of the Great Depression to stabilize the money supply in the U.S. To stabilize the money supply. And right now, just full disclosure, right now, it... it Deflation is going crazy, and it's crushing us in many other countries right now. Gold reserves were transferred from the Federal Reserve Bank to the U.S. Treasury at a discount. The intended effect of the law was to increase the money supply and stem deflation by devaluing the dollar, including in foreign exchange markets. Hmm. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, listen, all I'll say to you is, is we don't know what's going to happen. But I can tell you one thing. 
I know the sound of a beating drum when I hear it. And right now I'm hearing the sound of that beating drum from all corners of the world and particularly all the right levels of players in the right places to actually make a moment like this happen. Head on a swivel out here, folks. This is crypto. You never know. And remember, we are approaching a time of convergence where the traditional markets are converging with this new digital asset space in this new financial world, which will give us a brand new monetary system. I really do believe that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, leave a comment below and share with somebody you know. I'll catch all of you on the next one.